Before 2017, having an Intel Core i5 processor meant you were getting a quad-core CPU with ample performance to satisfy the needs of most mainstream consumers who weren't necessarily enthusiasts. However, in 2017, AMD introduced a formidable competitor to Intel CPUs with their Ryzen series processors. In response, Intel launched their 8th generation of Intel Core CPUs codenamed Coffee Lake. This generation marked a significant change for Intel as they finally increased their core counts of their processors. The mid-range i5, typically a quad-core desktop CPU, made a leap and became a hexa-core with six physical cores. With the initial release, Intel introduced two i5 models to the consumer market, the 8400 and the 8600K. While the 8600K featured higher clock speeds and an unlock multiplier, the 8400 represented what many mainstream buyers sought for their systems. Today, I'd like to revisit the i5-8400 approximately 6 years after its launch. I happen to have one of these chips along with a compatible platform for an XPC flip build which I'll feature on the channel. For this video, I intend to pair it with a more powerful GPU and test it in a few newer titles to see how it performs. But before we get into that, let's delve into some of the background of the 8400. As I mentioned earlier, the i5-8400 was one of the first i5 processors released as part of the 8th generation of Intel Core processors. Coffee Lake represented a significant advancement for Intel, which had been somewhat stagnant in terms of their product offerings until that point. Built on a 14 nanometer process, the 8400 is a true hexacore CPU with 6 cores and 6 threads. While the 8600K had an unlocked multiplier and higher frequencies, the 8400 was more power efficient, boasting a TDP of just 65 watts. It featured a core clock speed of 2.8 GHz and a boost clock of 4.0 GHz. Additionally, this i5 processor came with 9 MB of Intel Smart Cache and a bus speed of 8 GB transfers per second. The maximum memory size supported by the 8400 is 128GB with a maximum speed of 2666MHz. For comparison, the i5-8400 performs similarly to processors like Intel's own i7-7700K and AMD's Ryzen 5 3600. For pricing, the 8400 retailed for $182 US dollars but can be had right now for about $60 used. The 8th generation processors use the same LGA 1151 socket as the 6th and 7th gen, but they, along with the 9th generation, were not compatible with the older platforms. Instead, Intel introduced their 300 series chipsets. Since the i5-8400 couldn't be overclocked due to its locked multiplier, it was most advisable to pair with one of the mid-range chipsets such as the B360, which offered a balanced combination of cost, performance, and features. For my own testing, I've acquired an MSI B360M Gaming Plus motherboard locally for just $20. I'll pair it with 32GB of DDR4 memory running at the maximum rated speed of 2666MHz. Windows 10 will run from an NVMe SSD and the SATA SSD will serve as primary game storage. For the graphics card, I'll be using my dedicated CPU benchmarking GPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. This previous generation card is still powerful enough to stress the 8400 ensuring that we experience a CPU bottleneck in most scenarios. As I mentioned in a previous video, my testing lineup lacks more 2023 releases and I plan to incorporate more modern titles soon. For today, my goal is to push the 8400 in the games I do have and create a CPU bottleneck or simply challenge the CPU more than the GPU. The games will be tested in 1080p at fairly high settings. I chose 1080p mostly because both my testing monitor and capture card only support up to 1080p, but also, in most cases, I believe the 8400 would be featured in a dedicated 1080p gaming system. The RTX 3070 is a bit overkill for the 8400, and a more suitable pairing would likely be something like the GTX 1660 Super, 2060, or RTX 3050. First, I tested Red Dead Redemption 2, a game that was released on PC approximately 2 years after the 84 hit the market. I ran this game at ultra settings with DLSS set to balanced. Similar to other Rockstar titles, although it's quite demanding, it's well optimized for most modern hardware. Throughout my testing, the CPU consistently operated at over 90% usage, often exceeding 95%. Nevertheless, this still resulted in a relatively stable gameplay with a few noticeable stutters. Frame rates generally held steady around 70 to 80 FPS, but occasionally dipped as low as 50 FPS in demanding areas. However, if paired with one of the GPUs I mentioned earlier, you can expect very playable frame rates at medium to high graphics settings for this one. 
Next, I ran the benchmark in Horizon Zero Dawn, which was brought to the PC in 2020. This visually stunning game proved to be quite taxing on older hardware. I used the built-in benchmark tool with the ultimate quality preset and NVIDIA DLSS set to balance. Apart from some minor screen tearing, the results were impressive, averaging 95 FPS, and the CPU was the limiting factor throughout the benchmarking test. After that, I tested Forza Horizon 5 using the Extreme preset. With the built-in benchmark, the i5-8400 achieved an average FPS of 90. My 3070 GPU was pushed to its limits here, especially with ray tracing enabled, utilizing a significant amount of VRAM. Nonetheless, we demonstrated that the 8400 is more than capable of handling Forza Horizon 5 even when the CPU is the bottleneck. In Cyberpunk 2077, I chose to test at the high preset with DLSS set to balance and medium ray tracing effects enabled. During the benchmark, frame rates ranged from the low to mid 50s in the more demanding early sections and climbed into the 70s toward the end of the test. This resulted in an average of around 59 FPS, which is perfectly playable, though I would recommend lower settings when using the 8400. The last game I tested was the 2023 release, Hogwarts Legacy. This game can put significant strain on system and video memory, even at 1080p. I selected the high preset with DLAA enabled. I began outside the castle grounds and made my way into Hogsmeade, one of the more demanding areas. In Hogsmeade, FPS dropped from the low 80s to the 60s and 70s, and I noticed some delays in rendering small details and textures. On the castle grounds and inside the castle, performance was similar with frame rates in the 60s and occasionally dropping into the 50s. In the end, my benchmarking run yielded an average of about 75 FPS, which is more than sufficient for an enjoyable gaming experience. To sum things up, when combined with a capable system and graphics card, the i5-8400 can still handle many demanding games at 1080p. Despite lacking hyper-threading, its six physical cores are sufficient for managing multi-core CPU intensive titles. While the 8th and 9th generation Intel processors belong to a relatively recent platform and should remain relevant for some time, I'm not entirely certain I would recommend the i5-8400 over something like a Ryzen 5 3600. The AM4 platform offers significant upgradability for a relatively modest initial investment. You can pair a used Ryzen 5 3600 with a B450 board for just over $100 and still have an option for an upgrade to a 5th generation processor down the line. However, if you have a preference for Intel and all you need is an older 6-core CPU like the 8400, I would definitely recommend it over Intel's older processors as the 8th generation represented a significant improvement. In any case, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for similar content in the future. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment them and let me know. Thank you.